Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to uh, Mount Calvary, Wednesday in the Word. Certainly, we greet our members and our friends who have joined us tonight. Uh, we thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes and you know, wherever you are at this uh, particular time. We are excited that we are a part of uh, your life, and uh, we do not take it for granted. As I always say, you could be watching any ministry across this country, across this nation, but you have tuned in to us, and for that, we're indeed grateful uh, that you are a part of our family. Uh, shall we bow? Shall we pray? Oh, God, we come before your presence tonight with open hearts, open minds, and thankful lips for the many blessings that you have already given unto us. God, we come to you tonight. And we're asking that you would uh, fill us afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. God, we realize that there are some who are struggling financially. God, we ask that you help them through this, this difficult time. Some we know, oh God, is suffering both physically and emotionally. We ask that you give them the strength to face whatever challenges that would come their way. God, we pray for those who are sick. We pray, God, that you will give your healing power. We pray for those who are confused. We pray, God, that you would give them uh, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, God, in this Advent season, we ask that you will give all of us the strength to live without hatred, without judgment, without prejudice. Help us, oh God, to put aside our differences and and celebrate what we all have in common. We ask for your grace so that we can learn from one another and grow closer to you and become more like our Savior who was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Oh God, we thank you for giving us your only begotten Son to take upon our nature. We ask, oh God, that you continue to strengthen us and, and help us to become more God-like. Help us, O oh God, to follow the example of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for every heart and every mind that has joined us tonight in this setting. We pray, God, that you bless our time together Pray, God, that you would fill us with your presence. We pray, God, that the spirit of the living God would fall fresh on us as we study your word tonight. Keep us mindful, God, that the, that the work is all divine. God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. Not because we are a great and mighty people, but because you are a great and mighty God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we will uh, continue, uh, uh, shall I say, we will end uh, this mini-series that we have been on for the past several weeks, dealing with becoming financially fit, becoming financially fit. And uh, tonight, uh, uh, we will be looking at Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 19 through 20, as uh, the focus of this particular lesson tonight. Uh, as uh, we have been saying throughout this uh, series, that the purpose has been to make you a better steward and to show you how financial fitness can foster financial freedom and bring blessings into your lives. Uh, so tonight I want to conclude this series by looking at where to invest, where to invest. We, uh, this Financial Fit uh, series has been dealing with, uh, with, with money. It's been dealing with money and the management of money uh, and seeing it as a spiritual discipline. Uh, so tonight I want to look at Matthew chapter six uh, when Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus says in verses 19 through 21, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, 
where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break through and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Notice that Jesus says that you can store up treasure in heaven. What exactly does Jesus mean when he says you can store up treasures in heaven? The phrase store up for yourselves treasure in heaven is important because it is mentioned five times in the Bible. And, 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 and any time God says something five times, he is saying, I want you to be fully aware of this. I, I don't want you to miss this. Beloved, God wants you to know how to store up treasure in heaven. And because he wants you to know how to store up treasures in heaven, God has given uh, different funds that you can invest in for eternity. Yeah, God has given us different funds that we can invest that we can invest in for eternity. And these funds are proven they have a track record. They are protected. They are risk-free and they yield enormous dividends. Let's look at them real quick. The first one is God's growth fund. God's growth fund. God's growth fund is anything you invest in that will grow your character. Yeah, God's growth fund is anything that you invest in that will grow your character. Proverbs 10 and 16 says, Earnings of the godly enhance their lives, but evil people squander their money on sin. Notice wise people, godly people, use their money to make their lives better, to enhance their lives, as opposed to evil people who just blow their money, who just uh, waste their money. So how do you enhance your life with your money? You use it to grow. You use it to grow spiritually. You use it to grow uh, intellectually. You use it to grow emotionally. You use it to grow personally. When you use money to develop your skills, to become mature, to improve yourself, the Bible says that you are that you are storing up treasure in heaven. You are investing in eternity. And you know as well as I do that there are a zillion ways to waste money. We can buy things, but none of those things that we buy, they, none of them are going to last for all of eternity. None of them are going to go with us into eternity. We are all, we, we, we all going to leave that stuff behind. In other words, you are not going to take your car to heaven. You're not going to take your clothes, your condo, your china, or anything else physically with you to heaven. The only thing that you're going to carry is your character. God says when you invest money in your character, you're, you, are investing, you are investing in eternity. The Bible says in Luke 2 and 52, Jesus increased in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. When Jesus was growing up as a boy, he grew four ways. Yeah, he grew four ways. He grew in wisdom. That's, is, that is intellectual growth. He grew in stature. That is physical growth. He grew in favor with God. That is spiritual growth. And he grew in favor with man. That is social growth. And any time you use your money to grow in these four areas, the Bible says you're investing in eternity. Anytime you use your money to buy a Christian book, a DVD, a, a tenor retreat, go on a seminar, you are investing in yourself. You're growing your character. You are investing in God's growth fund. 
And the Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 23, invest in truth and wisdom, discipline and good sense, and don't part with them. Proverbs 16 and 16, it is much better to have wisdom and knowledge than gold and silver. In other words, it is better for you to take that money and put it uh, into something that's going to help you to grow. So the first thing God said to do with your money is to use it for a growth fund. Use it for things that will help grow your character. Invest in making yourself better smarter, wiser, and a more skilled person. The second fund is God's mutual fund. God's mutual fund is when you invest in eternity by using your money to encourage fellowship. When you use uh, money to when you use money to draw us closer together as brothers and sisters in the faith, you are building relationships with other believers and you are showing love by the way you spend your money. Proverbs 12 and 10 says, love one another with mutual affection. Uh, Romans 12, 12 and 13 says, share what you have with God's people who are in need. Show hospitality. When you spend money on hospitality to other Christians, God says that is like storing up uh, treasures in heaven. Hebrews 10 and 24 says, think of ways to encourage one another without outbursts of love and good deed. In other words, be creative, be innovative, put some thought into it. In God's mutual fund, anytime you give to other believers and you use your money to serve and to help other believers and to show love, it draws you closer to them, and it builds fellowship. So why does God want you to use your money to show love to other believers? There's three reasons why. First, it proves that you are in God's family. Yeah, it proves that you are in God's family. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 12 to 13 uh, say, uh, this service of giving not only helps the need of God's people, it also brings many more things to God, and it is a proof of your faith. Many people will praise God because you obey the good news of Christ, the gospel you say you believe, and because you freely shared it with them. This verse actually gives us three reasons. It says when you give to help other people who are believers, it helps their need, it meets their need, and it brings thanks to God. But it also proves your faith. It shows that you are really in the family of God. The second reason, it creates unity. When you share and use your money to show love, to other Christians, it creates unity. And by creating unity, it draws us closer together. The third reason God wants you to invest in, in the mutual fund is because it is a witness to unbelievers. It is a witness to unbelievers. In it, uh, in and every, every time you uh, use some of your money to show love to other Christians, non-Christians take notice. 3 John 1 and 5 says, when you extend hospitality to Christian brothers and sisters, even when they are strangers, you make the faith visible. You make the invisible faith become visible to the world. The third fund is God's service fund. God's service fund is you investing in eternity every time you use your money to serve others. God wants you to take some of your money and use it to help people who are in need. When you invest in the service fund, you are meeting needs in Jesus' name. Meeting financial needs, meeting emotional needs, meeting physical needs. You are meeting needs in every possible way. 
and 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 some some of the passages of scripture from the Bible that deals with God's service for them is uh, allow me to live uh, just, uh, maybe a couple uh, Ecclesiastes chapter eleven verses one and two the message translation says be generous invest in acts of charity charity yields high returns don't hoarder your goods spread them around be a blessing to others. This could be your last night. What is he saying there? He's saying you don't know when you're going to die. So go ahead and start giving now. In other words, do your giving while you are living. You got to give while you are still alive. Beloved, opportunities for service are all around, are all around you. All you got to do is just open up your eyes. There are people in your own backyard. There are people living next to you in your neighborhood, in your church, in your community, in your city who are down and out, who are out of work, who are going through a tough time. And when you invest by giving something of value to somebody else, you help somebody in need and you are, you are investing in the service fund. James 2 and 15 through 17 say, suppose you see a brother or sister who needs food or clothing and you say, God bless you, stay warm, eat well, but then you don't give them any food or drink, any food or clothing. What good does that do? Faith that does not show itself by good works, by good deeds, is no faith at all. In fact, it's dead and useless. Proverbs 11 and 24 says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. In other words, the more you help others, the more God will bless you. Why? Because God wants you to be like him. God is a giver. God is generous. And God wants you to be like him. Proverbs 28 to 27 says, give to the poor and you'll never be in need. But if you close your eyes to the poor, many will curse you. Proverbs 19 and 17 says, when you give to the poor, it's like lending to the Lord and he will pay you back. So you got to invest in God's service fund. The fourth fund is God's global fund. You invest in eternity every time you use uh, money to bring people to him. And that's the global fund. When you use your money to bring people to Jesus, to spread the good news, to, uh, to spread the gospel, you are investing in the global fund. And God says that that is storing up treasures in heaven. God wants you to use your money to take the good news around the world. When you invest in getting people into heaven, there is no higher use of your money. In fact, it's the greatest investment of your life just to be able to reach one more for Jesus Christ. So let me ask you, is anybody going to heaven because of you? Is anybody going to heaven because of of your witness, 2 Corinthians 9 and 13 uh, says, you honor God through this uh, genuine act of service in your commitment to spread the good news of Jesus Christ through your generosity in sharing. God cares about the whole world. God is a global God. And my brothers and sisters, technology has made it uh, of such that uh, you no longer have to leave the, uh, the country uh, to, to, to spread the world, the word around the world, uh, but technology can do that for you. Uh, even sitting right there in your living room, you can make it happen. You can spread the word of God without even leaving your living room, your den, your family room, through technology. God is a global God, and he wants you to be a global person. And you become that 
when you invest in service fund because you're storing up treasure in heaven. Five, God's treasury fund. The treasury fund is this. You invest in eternity every time you use money to worship God. Yeah, when you use money to and give money to God, it is an act of worship. Proverbs 3 and 9, honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all of your income and he'll fill your barns and overflow your barrels. This is a promise. God says when you give to him that he will give to you. We know this giving as the first 10%. It's called the tithe. When you give your first 10% to God, that is the tithe. Anything above a tithe is an offering. And the Bible says, bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord. And when you do that, you invest in, in the treasury fund. Although in reality, you really can't give God anything because he doesn't need anything because he owns everything. But he loves to receive tithes and offerings because it is an act of worship. And God loves uh, for us to worship him. It's like when my parents gave me an allowance as a child and then I would go out and buy a present for, for my mom or my dad's birthday. In essence, it was really their money, but it was the thought and the love behind it. Giving an offering to God is an ultimate act of worship. And giving an offering to God brings pleasure to God. It is not that God needs it, but we give it in love. So you ask, what, what's love got to do with it? Matthew 6 and 21 says, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That is why God wants us to give him an offering. Because where our money goes is where our heart goes. You might not care anything about Microsoft, but I declare that if you bought some stock in it, you will start caring about Microsoft. Because where your money is, where your assets are, where you where you place your treasure, you start caring about it. You start paying attention to it. Whatever you put your, wherever you put your money shows your priorities and your values. So my question to you today is, where is your heart? Where are your values? Where are your priorities? Can I tell you a quick way to find out where your heart is, what your values are, where your priorities are? Regardless of what you say that is important to you, if you really want to know where your heart is, what your values are, where your priorities are, look at the, the debits of your bank account or credit card. Look at your schedule or your calendar. The way you spend your Money, the way you spend your time, shows what you worship. Shows what's most valuable to you. Shows what's important to you. Because again, wherever your treasure is, your heart will be there. So my question to you is, where do you want your heart to be? If you want your heart to be with God, then one of the things that you 
do is invest your tithes and your offering. Job 22, 24 and 25 says, Give up the lust for money. The Almighty himself will be your treasure. So in closing, let me ask you, are you storing up treasure in heaven through God's growth fund to help grow your character? God's mutual fund to encourage fellowship? God's service fund to serve others? God's global fund to bring others to him? God's treasury fund to worship God? Are you using your money for good and to serve the purposes of God? Are you storing up treasure in heaven each and every day? Jim Elliott once said, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep for that which you cannot lose. My time is up. I thank you so much for your time tonight and for sharing with us in the final lesson of this, uh, in this series. I pray that you will become a better steward than you were on yesterday and today you become better on tomorrow and in days to come. Shall we pray? Oh God, thank you for the time we've shared tonight. Thank you, God, for this, uh, for each person who have tuned in. God, we know that you know the stories of each of us. And God, we, even in the midst of whatever we're facing and whatever we're going through in life, we know that you are there. God, as we come tonight, we thank you for this lesson that reminds us that we must invest in our treasure in heaven. And God, because you know us and, and you know exactly what we're going through, we pray, oh God, that you will continue to give us the peace, your peace, that surpasses all understanding. We pray, God, that even in the midst of this uh, Advent season, when we expect miracles to happen, God, we pray now for a financial miracle. God, somebody needs a financial miracle today. God, they need to know how to get back on track. They need to know, God, how they can, can come up out of the hole. Somebody need a financial miracle, God. So we pray, God, for another miracle. A miracle of a job, a miracle of blessing, a miracle of money, miracles of turnaround. God, create some unexpected income. God, we ask that you just work another miracle in this season. And God, we'll be careful to give you the glory. We'll be careful to say it was done because of you and not because of us. And God, we pray for that person tonight who has given their life to you. Pray, God, that you engulf them with your presence, embrace them with your love, empower them with your Holy Spirit. Encourage them through your word. Oh, God, we thank you once again for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would help us to follow his example throughout the coming year. May we realize that Christmas is not just about decorations and gifts, but about the love and the hope that your son, Jesus Christ, brings into our lives. Help us, O oh God, to follow his teachings and to love one another as he loved us. May every one of us know the real meaning of Christmas 
and the love and hope that you bring to us all. So God, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for meeting us here once again. We ask that you continue to bless us and keep us, lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, because we are moving into the Christmas holidays, uh, we will uh, not be sharing Wednesday in the Word again until uh, the 11th of January. Uh, so join us on uh, the 11th of January for another segment of uh, Wednesday in the Word here at Mount Calvary Church. Uh, but you can uh, join us uh, each Sunday morning in person at 10 a.m. Uh, for our morning worship experience. You can also uh, check us out on uh, Facebook as well as YouTube. Our New Year's Eve service will be held uh, on the 31st at 8 p.m. Uh, in person as well as online. And so we invite you to come and to share uh, in that experience. And of course, this is Come Home for Christmas here uh, at Mount Calvary. And uh, this Sunday, uh, um, our presiding elder Johnny Calhoun uh, will be uh, the, the preacher of the hour. So we invite you to come and to share. Uh, and then on the fourth Sunday, which is Christmas Day at 10 a.m., uh, we will have our Christmas at Mount Calvary. So we ask that you come and, and be a part of uh, uh, the worship experience with us uh, in person or uh, online. Again, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, on tonight. We pray that God will continue to bless and keep you. You will have a wonderful week. And as always, my brothers and sisters, stay in his grip. Amen.